Hey everybody, welcome back to James Bond Revisited here on Joe Blow Originals. It has been a pretty long time since our last episode because, as all James Bond fans know, the character was killed off at the end of No Time to Die. But, as they promised during the end credits, James Bond will return. And sure enough, the rumor mill has been in overdrive about who is going to be the next actor to slip on 007's iconic tux. So let's go through 10 actors that could potentially play James Bond. And at the end, I'll give you all my pick. Getting the biggest one out of the way, everybody's been saying that Aaron Taylor Johnson seems like a shoe in to play James Bond, and sure enough, he's been very cagey in interviews. But I remember back when they cast Daniel Craig in the role, there were a lot of actors that were considered front runners for the part that are also being cagey. Julian McMahon, who was pretty big on Nip Tuck at the time, was heavily rumored to be taking over the role, and that never ever happened. Also, Ewan Griffith. His co-star in Fantastic Four also seemed to be a favorite for a while, but it never happened. And we found out that the only one that really gave Daniel Craig a run for his money was a very young Henry Cavill. So, Aaron Taylor Johnson, could he play James Bond? Yes, he could. He's definitely the right age. He's in his early 30s. He's built well. He looks good in a tuxedo. He could certainly play the part, but would he? Don't stick it in on it's kind of complicated because he's starring in Craven the Hunter. And if that was a huge hit, it theoretically could tie him up in a franchise for a couple of years. But doesn't seem to me the kind of thing that's just going to churn out movie after movie after movie. So I think that if the producers wanted him to play James Bond, I think he'd be available. And I think he'd also be willing. I mean, to me, he's a good looking guy who can definitely handle action. He's almost too pretty and too muscular to play James Bond, though. I think that when you choose James Bond, you kind of have to go for this X factor that I'm not quite sure Aaron Taylor Johnson has, but possibly if he was to play the role, he would really show what he was worth because what they do at Eon Productions is they put all the actors through these really, really intensive training sessions where they have to act out all these classic James Bond scenes. So they really know whether or not a person is going to work in the role. If you go onto YouTube, you can see a lot of kind of failed James Bond auditions. There was Sam Neill, who you think would have been an amazing James Bond, but also is a little bit awkward in his screen test that was for The Living Daylights. And then of course there's also a screen test for James Brolin for Octopussy. Despite being an American, he actually nailed the screen test and came very, very close to playing James Bond, only for Roger Moore to return when Sean Connery signed on to do Never Say Never Again, because hey, they needed a pro. So if Aaron Taylor Johnson doesn't play James Bond, who else would be a shoe in A lot of people have of course set Henry Cavill because she almost nabbed the part way back in 2006 for Casino Royale. He was too young at the time, and oddly, I feel like he's almost too old right now, which sounds very ageist, and I agree. I mean, he's not even 40 years old. He could definitely play the part for another 15 years, but something tells me they're gonna look for an actor that's in his early 30s. They wanna lock somebody in probably for the next 10 to 15 years, at least. That said, I still think that Henry Cavill could play the role. In fact, I think the only reason he wouldn't play the role is that he already played a character that was pretty close to James Bond in Guy Ritchie's The Man From U.N.C.L.E. And you know what? It didn't really work at the box office, despite being a really good movie and I think that's what's gonna actually keep him from playing the role. Same thing goes for actually Richard Madden who would be the number three choice here. I think that Richard Madden probably would have had a really good chance to play James Bond had he not starred in the Amazon TV series Citadel in which he plays a very James Bond-like character. I don't think the producers are very keen on doubling up on their actors playing spies because theoretically he's tied into Citadel for a couple years and I really don't think they want James Bond also playing a James Bond-esque figure on the small screen, so I think that totally takes him out of the running. Who else could play James Bond, though, that would be a little less obvious? Here's a wild choice for number four that I think some people are going to love and some people are really going to hate. There's been a lot of talk about how James Bond could theoretically be a person of color, and I think that if I was to choose the next James Bond, I wouldn't choose somebody super polished. I would choose Riz Ahmed. I think he's an amazing actor. I don't think he's ever gotten the chance to actually do a real action movie before, but I think he could probably get in shape and could probably nail the part if he got the opportunity. Some people would say that he's not suave or sophisticated or handsome enough to play Bond, but you know, if you watch him in Sound of Metal, his performance in that movie is so incredible and so unlike anything that he'd ever done before. I think that he could probably be one of those guys that would completely transform himself 
if he was to play Bond. I think he would transform his body, I think he'd transform his look, and I think that he'd deliver this really amazing performance. He's maybe not going to get it, he's probably too controversial a part, maybe a little too out of left field, but I really think that if they were to go for a person of color for the role, Riz Ahmed would be an interesting way to go. Of course, number five is Regé-Jean Page, who everybody seems to think could be the next James Bond, again, if they were to cast a person of color. My issue is this, I think he's too smooth and too polished. He was great in Bridgerton, women like him. If you watch him in Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, he kind of steals the movie, but he's very lightweight. He doesn't seem to be the kind of guy that has a lot of gravitas, and I think that they want a more tortured actor to play James Bond. I mean, if you look at Daniel Craig, he really had some pathos going. Even Pierce Brosnan, as handsome as he was, was kind of able to evoke something a little more nuanced and deeper in James Bond. Reggae Jean Page would probably be a little too much of the Roger Moore school. Not that there's anything wrong with that at all, because as anybody who watches this series knows, Roger Moore is actually my favorite James Bond. I just don't think it's a direction that they really want to go in. So you blame his mother for his corruption? Number six, interesting choice, Tom Hiddleston. Again, I think that he may not get the part because they might think he's either A, too old, or B, too caught up with Marvel doing Loki. I think he definitely looks the part. He's maybe a little too blue-blooded in some ways, a little too, you know, upper-class English and sophisticated. I think they like more of a rougher sort to play James Bond nowadays. And he really looks like he could play the part, especially if you watch him in The Night Manager, which I still think is the best thing that he's ever done. He was great in that, but you know, they are doing a season two of The Night Manager as well. So again, he's gonna be playing this very James Bond-like character on the small screen. And we all know that Eon doesn't like that. They want their Bonds exclusive. Uh, James Bond, Tom Hiddleston, what's the scoop? What's going on? <laughs> oh, listen to that. Listen to that. Yes. Um, Number seven, another Bond of color, potentially, Henry Golding. I think that Henry Golding would actually make a better James Bond than Reggie Jean Page because he has a little bit of that rougher quality. I think the thing that hurt him was probably Snake Eyes because that movie fell flat and it was supposed to be the film that launched him into being a major movie star and it just kind of whiffed at the box office. And his performance honestly wasn't that great. But then again, he was very good in Crazy Rich Asians. He was very good also in The Gentleman. I think if they really were to put him through the James Bond boot camp, he could kind of make it work. Number eight is another Bond of color, which would be kind of interesting. Dev Patel, hear me out on this one. Yes, he doesn't look like your typical James Bond type character, but he's Scottish, just like one of the greatest James Bonds of all time, Sean Connery. And women love the guy. I mean, I was watching The Green Knight and women in the audience were cooing and sighing. You wouldn't think that necessarily Dev Patel was a heartthrob, but he seems to be turning into one. And I think that if he was to put on a lot of muscle, he theoretically would be a really good choice to play James Bond. He's definitely the right age. He's kind of a youngish guy, but he's got some gravitas going for him. He's doing a big action movie that he's also directing called Monkey Man that theoretically could put him on the radar for the part. So who knows? I'm ready now. Number nine, Idris Elba. Again, sadly, he's too old. He probably would have been an amazing Bond 15 years ago, but hey, this was Daniel Craig's reign as Bond, and sadly, I think he's kind of in the Clive Owen school, where on paper, he would have played a perfect James Bond, but just missed the part because the timing didn't work out. Again, Idris Elba could theoretically go and play another James Bond-like character in different movies, but it just hasn't really happened for him yet, and he also seems like he's really wanting to move on from being tipped for that role. I think it kind of has hampered him to some degree as he's tried to move on in his career. So let's take Idris Elba out of contention. But number 10 is a guy that I haven't really heard in the conversation, but I think would probably be the best choice of all to play James Bond. And that's Dan Stevens. Now, if you watch Down Abbey, you might think that he's a little bit too posh, but the movie that really made me think that he could play James Bond was Adam Wingard's The Guest. He is so charismatic and cool in that movie, and he's such a good-looking guy. I mean, women go crazy for him. Yeah, sure, he's kind of blondish, but hey, so was Daniel Craig. I think he'd probably look great in a tuxedo, but he can also do action, and he can also be a little bit rougher, again, as seen in The Guest. My only issue is that I feel like Stevens is the kind of guy who wants to explore a lot of different kind of characters in his career, and I think him actually quitting Downton Abbey fairly early in the run is a sign of that. I don't think he likes being pigeonholed as this kind of handsome English guy, so 
Whether or not he would accept the role of James Bond is the big question. And if he was to accept the role of James Bond, I also feel he would do the classic James Bond actor thing where they get really sick of the role after a couple of years and, you know, want to be seen as more than Bond. But hey, for better or worse, once you play James Bond, you are James Bond until the day you die. Everybody knows this. Daniel Craig can play Benoit Blanc or whatever role he wants. Inevitably, when Daniel Craig dies, James Bond has died. Same thing that happened to Sean Connery, the guy who won an Oscar for playing in The Untouchables, but still just considered James Bond at the end of the day because that's the power of the role. James Bond is such an iconic character. That said, if you were to ask me for my choice, which you are by watching this video, I would absolutely choose Dan Stevens. And if I couldn't do Dan Stevens, I would probably choose somebody like Riz Ahmed or Dev Patel just because they're so out of left field. I feel like they would really work overtime to convince you that they're right for the part and would probably be amazing. So I don't know, we'll see who's gonna play the part. I'm sure that whoever Eon chooses though will be great because they really do know what they're doing when it comes to selecting James Bonds. There's never really been an actor that's played James Bond that was terrible where you were like, oh God, why did they cast him? I mean, sure, there have been James Bonds that have been shorter lived than others, particularly George Lazenby and Timothy Dalton, but neither of them actually gave bad performances at all as James Bond. And in fact, I think Timothy Dalton was perhaps one of the greatest James Bond of all time because both of his movies are amazing so for me his average of success as James Bond is higher than anyone else's we'll see but I'd like you all to comment who you think would be the next James Bond and who you think would be the best at playing the role whoever it is is going to have to be somebody that will theoretically play the part for another 10 years or so so try not to choose anybody that's too old because it just doesn't seem feasible to me that Eon would cast somebody that was maybe older than 45. I really think they're probably looking for somebody in the early 30s. So we'll see. I'm excited to hear from you all, and we'll be back for another episode of James Bond Revisited pretty soon. I need you back. I never left.